In the first scene, we meet a professional hitman known as the killer in Paris. He has a perfect score and makes no blunders. He rented an office opposite the hotel after receiving another assignment to keep an eye on the situation and his potential victim. He lives by strict standards, always follows them, and never defies the law because it could betray his identity and ruin his reputation. The killer is careful not to leave fingerprints or DNA, as he does not want to wind up in jail. He calls his handler after five days of tracking his target and informs him that he is about to leave because the subject has not appeared. His handler instructs him to wait a little longer, and the killer only allows to stay for two days. That evening, as he is preparing his weapon, he hears someone approaching him. It turns out to be a courier who drops the mail on the floor without opening. Soon after waking up in the middle of the night, he detects movement in the room on the top level and understands that the potential victim is on his way. The killer carefully prepares his gun and chooses the ideal height for the shot. He has calculated every detail and every small factor that could impact the trajectory of the bullet, and it appears that nothing should stand in the way of the assignment being completed successfully. Despite this, the killer misses his shot on the target and kills the woman accompanying him. He destroys all evidence on his way to the airport after swiftly departing the office building. He does everything he can to clean himself up and leave no trace that could lead the cops to him. While departing Paris, the assassin calls his handler to inform him of the mission's failure. The lawyer informs him of the potential ramifications, but the killer is unconcerned about what transpired and promises to rectify the issue as soon as possible. The killer spots a suspicious stranger and suspects that he is a mercenary out to assassinate him. The hitman has reserved a hotel room near the airport and is getting ready to meet the undesirable visitor. To accomplish this, he lays a glass on the doorknob and a metal plate on the bottom to help him wake up from the noise. The man sits in the chair, holding a knife, but discovers during the night that he was wrong and that it's just a passenger. The killer leaves the hotel the next morning and travels to a safe house in the Dominican Republic. He discovers several cigarette butts and a man's boot prints when he gets home. When the killer realizes that someone has been here, he arms himself and creeps onto the property. He uncovers indications of a struggle, broken furniture and dishes, as well as blood, inside the house and learns that his beloved girlfriend is in the hospital. The assassin rushes over to her. Marcus reports that his sister was attacked by two unknown individuals who were looking for him. Despite being tortured and abused, the girl not only remained mute but also managed to stab one of the robbers in the leg. The killer discovers the circumstances of what happened after speaking with his girlfriend and pays doctors to care for her. When the killer returns home, he digs out a secret chest containing falsified documents, money, and weapons. He understands he cannot forget what occurred and resolves to exact vengeance on the perpetrators of his beloved girlfriend's crimes. Knowing that the criminals arrived in a green cab, the killer searches for a car. Soon after, he discovers a business that employs green cars and decides to track down the driver who opted to give the criminals a ride. The hitman goes into the administration building late at night and discovers that the cab driver's name is Leo Rodriguez. Knowing the driver's appearance, the man begins following him and, seizing an opportunity, gets inside his car. The killer threatens Leo with a gun and forces him to tell him about a man and a lady he gave a lift to the day before. The terrified driver obeys all of the armed client's instructions and claims that he picked them up from the airport where they later returned. The killer murders the cab driver and flees to New Orleans, leaving no witnesses. The man rents a white van and drives to one of his hideouts a storage facility containing fake license plates, firearms, and ammunition. He goes to a building goods store the next morning and purchases an air nail gun, a dumpster, and other essential equipment. The killer then goes downtown and looks for Dolores. The building is unsafe because it has a shoddy security system and only one camera at the entrance. After waiting for the mailman, the killer disguises himself as a janitor and enters the office building. When the mailman goes inside, the killer calculates the time the door takes to close. The killer sneaks in and threatens the secretary with a gun as soon as the courier leaves. He has, as it turns out, broken into the office of Hodge's attorney, who is also his handler. 
The killer instructs the lawyer and his assistant to tie up before destroying Hodge's computer and tablet. The killer requires the client's name, but the handler refuses to disclose any information. He reminds the killer of his blunder and believes the repercussions are unavoidable because no one forgives mistakes. To elicit a confession, the killer fires nails into the lawyer's chest and requests the client's name. He assumes Hodge has a few minutes to tell him, but the man passes out before he can say anything. Dolores understands the killer would not leave her alive, but she requests that it be done delicately so that her children will have her life insurance. The killer, who has no compassion, complies with the secretary's requirements because she cannot consume sleeping drugs and settle the score with her life. Furthermore, only she knows the customer's name and can assist in locating the perpetrators of what occurred to his girlfriend. The killer and the secretary leave the office building and go to the woman's house after loading the lawyer's body into a garbage bin. Dolores tries to flee while the man opens the garage door, but her hands are tightly restrained. Realizing she has no other option, the woman assists the killer in locating a customer in Chicago. After obtaining the essential information, the killer breaks Dolores' neck and pushes her down the stairs to make it appear as if it was an accident. The killer then hides his tracks and eliminates the evidence, including the lawyer's body. A few days later, he travels to Florida in search of the first perpetrator, known as Brute. The killer calculates the accused criminal's house and notices that he has guests, as well as a nasty dog that must be neutralized. He goes to the nearby grocery store and buys minced beef and sleeping tablets before returning to the brute's house. In the evening, the brute follows a band of thieves to a casino, where they decide to gamble part of their hard-earned money. The brute returns home alone at night, and the killer decides to take advantage of the opportunity. He begins by attracting the dog's attention and feeding it minced meat laced with sleeping tablets so that it does not represent a threat to him. The killer observes after a few minutes that the dog has stopped barking and has gone to sleep. The killer enters the building and learns that the criminal is in the toilet. The brute assaults him as soon as he arrives, assuming the killer is a daring robber. A battle breaks out between the guys. The killer rushes out of the house, having taken the first step towards vengeance, but the dog is awake and ready to tear apart the stranger on his turf. Following his escape, the hitman throws a Molotov cocktail into the brute's house, causing the fire to obliterate all evidence. Knowing that the next target resides in New York, the killer gets a plane ticket and takes a shower to remove any blood stains. The killer rents an inconspicuous car and drives to the home of the expert, the lady involved in the attack on his beloved, using fake documents in someone else's name. Knowing what she looks like, the killer waits for the blonde to come and follows her. At one of the traffic lights, the killer stops next to the expert and prepares to shoot, but decides not to. He chooses to see the woman face to face after following her to the restaurant. The expert is terrified because she understands she is up against the killer who has resolved to avenge the crime. She excuses her conduct by citing the command, which she was unable to follow, but the killer has no pity and will not forgive her. Despite his mistrust of the expert, he drinks with her and offers to go for a walk. The woman recognizes that her days are numbered and cherishes every moment of her existence. She wants the killer to locate a lovely location for her death in order to make it more beautiful. She tries to draw him into a trap at one point, but he shoots her dead. The killer travels to Chicago after learning the name of the customer behind everything that is going on. He locates Mr. Claiborne and discovers that he is a billionaire who lives in a secure home. The assassin gains access to the subterranean parking garage, but there is a door with an electronic lock. In preparation for another burglary, he purchases a duplicate key card and registers at the billionaire's gym. The killer purchases a gun that has never been used before after transferring the funds to a separate account. He goes to the gym the next morning after receiving a parcel containing a duplicate keycard. 
The assassin breaks into the billionaire's security guard's locker and scans the access key as soon as everyone departs for training. He returns to Mr. Claiborne's residence in the evening and chooses to wait for an opportunity to attack. When the killer notices a food delivery man leaving the parking lot, he sneaks inside and proceeds up to the billionaire's apartment. Claiborne, terrified, misidentifies the visitor as a burglar, claims that there are no valuables in his home, and requests that he leave, avoiding friction and future difficulties. When the killer reveals the reason for his attack, the billionaire admits he had nothing to do with what happened. He directed the murder of a competing businessman and paid for it, but he was oblivious to the potential ramifications. After the sniper missed, the lawyer requested extra money to dispose of the evidence. The killer decides to let the billionaire live after realizing he is telling the truth and is not implicated in what happened to his girlfriend. At the same time, he threatens Claiborne that if he tries to track him down or exact revenge on him, he will return for him. The killer departs Chicago and returns to the safe house after deleting all evidence. In the closing scene, his girlfriend is discharged from the hospital, and the couple enjoys a beach vacation bringing the movie to an end. Thanks for watching. If you are new don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.